Allen Iverson. Some say he's the next Jordan, including Chuck Daly, which means it's time for the Iverson Rules translation. Get them, boys. And Alexi may be looking to get Springfield's finest to watch his back after he hammered Ray from behind his. Is he just bare bait out there for the Bruins? And speaking of meat, is this guy a dead man walking? Why is Gomez Adams wishing him luck? That's not a good sign, I don't think. And Barnaby says his tirade is a sign of things to come in the ACC. If the fans are the sixth man, does that mean you can hit them too? And no one has ever hit harder than Mike the Monster. Unfortunately, some of those shots have been aimed at the public. Is it time to forgive or just forget that? Today, wrestling legend who knows a thing or two about biting, Mad Dog Vachon on OTR. got to be the best chair in the world. All week long, you get to sit, you get to meet three new people every day, and you get to throw out the most controversial topics. Let's keep it going. Here's a guy that you asked for. One of the greatest of all times, one of the true legends of wrestling, a Canadian hero, Mad Dog Vachon, today on OTR. Good to see you, man. Or excuse me, good to see you, Mad Dog. Thank you very much. I'm glad you called me by my first name. It's very nice to be here, my friend. <laughs> well, I got to, uh, don't get out of line, pal. <laughs> was, that, was that directed at me? That's right. Okay. I haven't had the uh, aid for a while yet. I'm, I'm hungry right now, pal. <laughs> we'll talk uh, about Mike Tyson later on. And uh, also on the show today, former member of the Canadian Rhythmic Gymnastics Team. I said Rhythmic. All right. I said it without screwing it up. Great to welcome to the show a coach now, Doran Grunwald. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. And Canada's number two ranked racquetball player, nine-time Canadian racquetball champion, Mike Saricia today on OTR. Hi, Mike. How you doing, Michael? Good. Today, Mike holding a baby on the cover of Esquire. Can a man be an absolute maniac and father of the year? And is there any way we can know about the answer to that? And a fan's role is to get into the game. What does that actually mean? And is there a role for the modern coach beyond scapegoat? Lots of questions today on OTR. But first of all, the Magic Sixers series tied at one. Game number three tonight. Chuck Daly says there's the Iverson rules, just as he once devised the Jordan rules. Wherever he goes, he's greeted with defenders' arms, elbows, legs flailing. Pound him, they say. Game number two, Matt Harpering popped him. He was just four for 15. Larry Brown, Iverson's coach, says, I don't know if it's like hockey. I guess it is. If they're going to hit him, we're going to hit them. If they're going to hit him, we're going to hit them. Is that kind of payback strategy or just men behaving like thugs on the court? What do you think? If you asking me, I think you're absolutely right. It's dog eat dog. They go there, one team hits you. Are you going to go there and tie your hands behind your back and do nothing about it? This is the way it is. Wake up and smell the coffee. That's the way sports is now. It's a dog eat dog world, just like professional wrestling. They, look at the hockey, for instance. Am I right there? No, no. <laughs> There's no sportsmanship in fighting, though. None whatsoever. Then you lose. So why don't the you get disqualified? Why, 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 why is the referee? Why are the rules then if, you, if it's, that's not sportsmanship? That's the way that I know. I agree what? with you 100%. Yeah, but what is the game about? Is it about pinning another guy? Or is it about, you know, getting the ball in the hoop? It's got to be tit for tat. It's got to be tit for tat. Hey, it was see, like that with Jordan, and it's going to be like that with Iverson. Iverson's the top dog. He's going to take the beating, and he's yeah, going to have to learn to live with it. you can't fault a guy for being an excellent basketball player. Not that's at just, all. That's just the way it is in, in the pro sports today. Yeah, you but are you going to lie down and take it? No, he's not going to, and neither is the team. He's going to step up to the plate, and he's probably going to play very well in game three. And uh, you can look for, uh, I think, they'll, they'll be all over the other team also. I'm with Doran here. I think you guys are throwing out the, the male testosterone version of what's right and what's wrong. I think I'm with you, Doran. Come on, dog. We're right here. We're 100 percent right. Well, aren't we? We're both agreed to the same thing. You know, you're not just gonna stay there and let the guy pawn on you. You know what I mean? Look at the hockey games. Remember when Quebec uh, they they played against the Montreal Canadiens? They had to hold the game up for one hour. It was blood all over the ink and at the Coliseum in Quebec City. And yeah, but you know, there there are different rules for different games. You know, in hockey, that's part part for the course. Oh, it's okay. But, then. It's I'm not right. saying no. Well, I am hold not on, before it. before you give your opinion on hockey, I feel like the official here. Before you get your opinion on that, take a look at this. This is Zitnik, Alexei Zitnik, hitting Ray Bork from behind. Uh, a penalty for sure. How severe was it? Kyle McLaren says it was uncalled for. It was a kind of from behind hit that you just don't do to guys like Ray. What do you think? 
Hundred percent true. Bork's a living legend, and that, that's just ridiculous. He's been around for 20 years, and uh, there has to be the same type of thing, okay. same type of aura with Gretzky. Uh, Zitnik, he's an idiot for that check. Do you I agree have to agree this? on that one. Michael, let me ask you something. You agree on that. So is that against the rule to do what he did or not? Is it against the rules? If it is, why, why don't they suspend him or disqualify him? Is, was that against the, is it a lot to check the, the way he did? Is, is it or is it not? It's, a, it's, a, it's definitely against the rules. He got a penalty for it, well, but he, probably not. That's, a, that's what you call checking, is it? No, not when it's from behind like that. Not from behind? No, that'd be like uh, biting from behind uh, in wrestling. You gotta, you gotta do it face to face. Exactly. <laughs> but Michael, like, you know, let, let, let's, there's a totally different aspect of what you're saying, which, which is the angle that, that, that I believe. Who cares if it's Ray Bork? Why does Ray Bork have to get to be treated differently than anybody else? Who cares uh, if he's played for 20 years? Well, for starters, for starters, uh, I don't think the hitting from behind. No, that's, no, no, that's not what you said. You said Ray Bork played 20 years, has to be treated with the same respect as Gretzky. Well, and, and, and I you think agree, that's Dorn. true. That's true. So, okay, well, okay no, but I, I agree from the point of view that it shouldn't be done to anyone from behind. You shouldn't be slamming people into the boards like that from behind. No, ma Actually, no matter who you are, it shouldn't happen. Okay, Dory, so you are, what you're trying to tell us here that it'd be all right if you did it from the front and broke the guy's neck. No, I didn't say legal. that at all. I, right? if, I, if I meant to say that, I would have said it would have been okay. Well, the way you sound, the way you sound, so it's okay to do it from the front. So if you do it from the front and push the guy in the board and break his neck, it's okay. It's legal because it's not from behind. But that's true. It's I mean, not it, a sneak it, it, it is possible to break a guy's neck from the front and do it legally. So that's okay. Oh, so you agree with the vi violence that they have there, right? So that's okay to have that kind of violence. It goes with the, the territory. Am I right? And don't give me a hard time. The safety I don't like the guys argue with me. If you don't want to get a hard time, uh, Mad Dog? I don't like I people arguing with me. <laughs> <laughs> but for once, I agree with you. You're absolutely right. If I had, you know, if I had... Uh, Friends like you, I wouldn't need enemies. Uh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> With friends like you, I don't need enemies. Four hundred shows. That's the first time anyone has directly insulted me like that. I, I want to ask you a question though. What you guys are like nodding your head, smiling like like I, you know what? You have divided up the show into sides, which is okay. We will take a break, and as we go to break, we'll tell you what is up next on Off the Record. I, I you know I can fully welcome the three of you. Bring it on. Bring it on. Rob Ray. Remember Rob Ray being on the show twice? If some guy is crazy enough to get in a player's face, does that mean that a player should be free to remove his head, fans, their rights, and their roles on OTR? Let's go. Matthew Barnaby has brought a very important issue to the fore, an issue that we've touched on on this show, and it gets all kinds of different reaction. Matthew Barnaby, playing for the Pittsburgh Penguins at the Air Canada Centre on Sunday night, was leaving. As he was leaving, he was called a name by a fan. He says that fan questioned his sexuality. We can imagine what that was. He whacked his sticks against the wall, put some damage there, says he's not going to pay for it because he says... The fans are too close. He says, quote, something will happen because somebody will be drunk, throwing beer or say something. They're going to get caught in the wrong situation at the wrong time. Is it okay for a fan to get in a guy's face and question his sexuality? With Barnaby, yes, the way he is, because the fan was right. But uh, in general, probably not. Dory, what do you think? Uh, there are certain lines that you shouldn't cross as a fan. There are certain lines that you shouldn't cross as the athlete. It's as simple as that. Unfortunately, they aren't clearly drawn for anyone. And, uh... Thorne, you're telling us that there are rules. The key is, what are those rules? Is it acceptable for a fan to get in a player's face and question his sexuality? To use the F word on that guy, the F-A word. Is it okay? I would have to say no. Doreen, let me tell you something. <laughs> I agree with you a hundred percent. You know, I'm tell I was in wrestling for so long. If somebody would have called me some dirty name when I was wrestling and coming out of the ring and spitting on me, and so I would say that's wrong completely. I would have quit a long time ago. They never did that to people. I, 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 yeah. I agree with you a hundred percent. That should never be allowed. It, it's, it's, it's crossing the line. It's, it's going overboard. You're absolutely right. The I agree is, with you. The thing is, it, you know, heckling is also a big part of professional sports. And so I understand that the hecklers will come out. But, you know, it depends on how it was said. Was it said in jest? And, and then also, uh, you know, a player should be a little bit more professional than that and be able to try and ignore it, too. Well, isn't, there a difference between, isn't there a difference between saying something to somebody and throwing beer on them? I think there's a big difference. I think you should be able to say whatever you want, pretty much, 
uh, while you're at the game. How can you call somebody a name? If yeah, you but you're, you can't slander a person. I mean, you shouldn't really be able to. Maybe not. Maybe oh, not hold on. Below the belt, you know, I guess but... someone's got to fight for the fans' rights here, and I'm certainly willing to do so, because there's more fans than there are guests. Fan shows up, pays a lot of money to get in, and the key to professional sports, Mad Dog, is emotion. And if I feel emotion, if I feel hate or I feel love or whatever, I think I should be totally free within my boundaries, never to touch a player, never to come near that player, but to say anything I want. Well, you know, you go to a, a, a hockey game or the basketball or any wrestling or anything like that. I think the, the, the people that pay the money, those $35 million a year, the, the, the big salaries now, there's some of the wrestlers are making big bucks too now, it's unbelievable. It's beyond the, the imagination what they're making now. But they're allowed to scream. That's what they go for, for to, to get it all out and scream all over. And, but like you say, sometimes you hit somebody personally under the belt. It hurts inside, you know what I mean? And it also, hurts, but, I, if but too bad. You're but right. If you're you get the money if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. You're right. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> That's what I say. You know, if you're speaking for the fans, as you said you were, you know, I might be there trying to enjoy the game too. And if Buddy beside me starts yelling profanities, it's also affecting my enjoyment of the game. So it's not just about, you know, all the fans being allowed to say whatever they want, because it not only affects the players, it affects the other fans trying to enjoy the game. It's an individual seat, though. You you bought your seat for a hundred bucks, so did he? he yeah, can but I act shouldn't have to sit wants. beside you and hear you well, yell profanities in my, my that's ear, part of the game, even though they're directed at the guy down on the ice. So no, you that's agree? The way it's with, be. So you agree, Mike, that uh, what she's saying that she's wrong? That people go there and they do all kinds of names. They swear you absolutely you kids there with you and they use all. You think that's all right because they pay the price? Absolutely. You're allowed to call you every name under the. I agree with her. It's not even right. There's, there's, there's definitely a line, but I think that you can extend that line sometimes, and that's, so what that's how you, gets it. What side are you on anyway? I'm, I, <laughs> I'm, on the, you on anyway? I'm on the side that you can say, you can say what you want while you're at the game, keeping in mind a little bit what's happening and who's around you. You should be able to get up, and if you feel like yelling and screaming something, you should be able to. You don't have to sit there and be like, uh, you know, at the ACC, it's why quiet. You, why not the guy, the person, do that at home before he goes to the game and scream at everybody? <laughs> maybe he does. Maybe he just didn't get it all out, Mad Dog. I, I, I th you know, I'm just sitting here. I'm listening to all this. I, I think you're all making great comments. I, I'm just remembering back to what you said, Mad Dog. Hello, you're a professional wrestler. The whole key to your existence, the reason why you existed, was the hate that fans had for the bad guy. And you can't tell me you didn't hear every line in the world, every comment, every swear word, everything yelled at you. And that's what made your sport successful. So don't tell me that a word like uh, Matthew Barnaby heard, um, that he should react to that, because you guys never did. I never heard such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely wrong. They never hollered names at me like that. And, uh, I'll holler them right now. Like this, you are no good so-and-so. You're like, I know what kind of, uh, yeah, please give me a break. People in wrestling are so polite, they're so <laughs> regimented. Uh, <laughs> really. All right, we, we will take a break. Are you playing with us? Are you Mad Dog Vashon? You know what? I didn't want to like you, but I can't help what I do. It's amazing that only a week ago, this guy's name was Jeff Van Gandhi. They should call him Lazarus because the dead have definitely risen in New York. All right, coaching is the situation here, and you know we put so much stock in. You got to have the right coach. You got to have the right coach. Does it make any damn difference? I think that's the question that we want to ask. Two weeks ago, New York Knicks. Uh, the media was saying Knicks have no chance in the playoffs. Now, after last night's game, they pounded the Miami Heat once again, 97-93. They lead the series two games to one. All of a sudden, their coach Jeff Van Gundy, who was a bum, who had to be fired, Van Gundy, they said has got to go. What does this tell you? The fact that now all of a sudden people are saying he's a hero. All comes down to the playoffs. I mean, especially in with a sh uh, strike shortened season, 50 games, uh, whatever they did, they made the playoffs. So now the point is that they're up 2-1. If they close the deal against Miami, beating the rivals, I think that his job's safe. Unfortunately, the Knicks are running. They don't have the horses. You know, they don't, uh, Ewing's about 100. And... Uh, <laughs> They just don't have the horses have to go the, past they that. They have the jockey, but they don't have the horses. That's right. But, you That's know, right. it's funny the way uh, one minute you're a dirty dog, and the next minute uh, 
they carry you on their shoulder. They've got it ready to fire the guy, and all of a sudden, he's the greatest. He can't, he can't do no wrong because you won a couple of games. That's yeah. how they treat coaches. Yeah. It's true. It, they're, you know, a, a disposable commodity. And it's unfortunate that coaches are treated that way. And I think it goes across the spectrum of sports. Coaches are underrated. Unfortunate for the coaches, but is it unfair? That's a question. Is it unfair that, um, like, we'll fire a coach if his team performs badly? Yeah. During the playoffs, definitely. I mean, it, it's put up or shut up time. I mean, that's why they're getting the big bucks. And especially Van Gundy, this is, is this his third year? About his third year? With uh, the Knicks? He took over midway through a couple of seasons ago. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so you it's just time finished to prove saying that, that the next team is like old and ancient and archaic and they need some new blood. Mm -hmm. Is that the fault of the coach? I don't think so. Unfortunately, he's You can the, only work with that, what you've got. That, well, that's you know? true enough. That's true enough, but he's the guy that's in control right now. And he, uh, he's got to perform with what he has. Or it's, but what or is it's it a new, his a fault situation. if his team can't make the playoffs? I agree with Doreen you know? 100%. Why put the blame on the coach? You know, when something goes wrong, there's always somebody else's fault. Why put the blame on the coach? A coach if the players, so you know, they, they're dragging their tail and then they don't want to perform. They don't do what he was supposed to. Look at Gretzky, you know, in New York. He didn't do all that good in New York, although he's the, he's the greatest, right? How come they, they don't fire the coach? How come that... Uh, they're not winning. Well, they're rebuilding, aren't they? Are you going to blame Gretzky or are you going to blame the coach in New York? I mean, let's let's get real there, pal. Let's get, get a life here. They're re they're, <laughs> you know I mean? First of all, Mad Dog, Mad Dog, they're rebuilding in, in New York with the Rangers. And second of all, uh, I think they're, Bobby Orr was the top player to ever play the game, but that's another subject. <laughs> well, uh, don't argue with me, pal. <laughs> <laughs> But I, <laughs> hey, I thought you were supposed to take it out on him, not me. No, no, he's siding with me because I yeah. said I like um, him. He's turned yeah. on you, pal. Oh, okay, I'll great. I'll yeah. with he, you later. <laughs> he's, getting, he's getting along well with Doreen. But uh, <laughs> Doreen, you know, what I'm afraid that, you know, pretty soon it's going to be uh, all the name calling in basketball <laughs> and hockey. Pretty soon it's going to be like it's going to spill into professional wrestling, and I, I, that's where I. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah that's it's going to yeah. be a real. Yeah, but isn't, isn't the point here the board. with coaching? It really doesn't make that much of a difference. What's a good coach? Pat Quinn is up for Coach of the Year in the National Hockey League. Jacques Martin is up for Coach of the Year in the National Hockey League. These guys between them have been fired four times. So at one time, these guys were bums. Now they're Coaches of the Year. What does that tell us? A coach? That everything's arbitrary. <laughs> I, I agree with you. That, you know. I, have, I agree with you. You've there. agreed with everything that you said. <laughs> you know, ask her out. Go ahead, Mad Dog. Just you know, do it. Let me tell you something. You know, you'd be surprised, my friend. <laughs> you, you know, at my age, the other day, this young girl was pounding on my uh, uh, hotel room door for for hours and hours. Finally, at 2 o'clock in the morning, I let her out. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I think they call that yeah. room service. Jim Schoenfeld. Uh, you know how hard this is to actually steer it back in the appropriate direction? Nice. Uh, Phoenix Coyotes coach. Uh, heard before the playoffs that if his team did not make it past the first round, he would be fired. They lose to... Uh, St. Louis in overtime in game number seven. They told him, win or you're out, should he be fired? That's a lot of pressure on a coach. And you, you're only as good as your athletes. And if they don't perform, I mean, you should you should be taking I don't some agree of with you it. at all. It, <laughs> Finally. It, it, the, the athletes are only as good as the coach. If the coach doesn't know where he went to send him in, when to call the shot, the, the players it's cannot... It's a symbiotic perform. relationship, okay? The, the coach has you, to work with the athletes, and further, the athletes have to work with the coach. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's the fault of the players. If the players don't perform, what can the coach do? Isn't the well, coach there to motivate? Said. No. You don't think the coach is there? Don't, if you don't do it, fire him. <laughs> you know the impressive thing here in Mad Dog? You, you've, you've argued with Mike. You've argued with Doran. You've argued with Doreen. And now you're arguing with yourself. <laughs> you've argued with everybody. Five people. There's only three of us up here. I know I did something wrong. I should have stayed in bed this morning. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad that you did not. We will take a break. And we always want to know what you think of the show and what guests you want. You asked for these guests. We delivered these guests. And we're glad that we have done so. Here's uh, what we received regarding yesterday's show off the record. Granny Liggins rocks. You don't see complete honesty these days from pro athletes. Seek the truth, Michael. We know it need to know. And you know what? We admire athletes like the three of you who come on the show and speak candidly. That's what this show is all about. You can reach us at that website, at that email, and that fax number. And on Monday, before we talk about the Tyson thing, Mike Sarisa, what's up with you? We've got the Canadian Nationals coming up. Uh, they're at uh, the Cedar Springs Racquet Club in Burlington and also at the Premier Racquet Club in Oakville. And that uh, starts May 25th. It'll be, uh, it'll be awesome. Mad Dog Vachon. 
Next Wednesday on the Comedy Channel. It's strange that wrestling is on the Comedy Channel. Yeah, right. Anyway, it's because it's called, it's uh, uh, the, about the Mad Dog. It's part of my life. It's a documentary, more or less, but it's on the uh, humorous side. It's called Wrestling with the Past. And a lot of it is funny, and if I, I would advise you to watch it, because if you don't watch it, you're going to live to regret it. <laughs> and I should tell you, sorry, <clears throat> I should tell you that's next Wednesday, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 o'clock Pacific Time on the Comedy Channel. Okay, cover of Esquire magazine. Take a look. Mike Tyson is there. Not unusual he'd be on a cover of a magazine. Slightly unusual that he is there caressing and kissing one of his children. Here's the question. First of all, the quote from his wife. He's human. He has a family. He's sweet. He's real loving and kind-hearted. He's giving in the ring. He's a warrior, but at home, he's a big teddy bear. When I see that picture and I hear a quote like that, I feel sorry for Mike Tyson. Anybody else? Well, I think that Mike Tyson, uh, he's got a lot of the mad dog in him. And sometimes, you know, he's got a short temper. That's why he's a great athlete, because he's always on the edge. He's nervous, and he never know when he's going to go into combat. And those guys like that, it's like a soldier that comes back from the war, and he's a... Uh, shell shock and sometimes some guy bother him and he nails him he becomes a mad dog and that's why mike tyson is like that he served i don't know about the stuff he had with the woman and he served time in prison but some of the stuff that he does i agree with him biting a guy's ear off some guy, somebody tried to knock his walk off <laughs> i don't break your jaw and then you get mad he's over the all. edge mad dog he's over the edge He's give me a ball when just I give me a ball and i'll be happy <laughs> don't interrupt me when i'm talking <laughs> Or else what? Jordan, you got 30 seconds for rebuttal. I, I take that quote with a grain of salt. Uh, we've seen what he does in public. Maybe he's different in private. We'll never know, really. But, you know, we see him in public and we judge him based on what we see in the public eye. Mike, just a few seconds left. Uh, he's on the edge. He's, he, he's way over the edge. I mean, during, during uh, in the ring, I can see him going ballistic. Outside of the ring, too far. Mike, thanks you very much. Uh, Doran Grunwald and Mad Dog Vachon. Have a good time tonight on your date. Thanks for joining us today on OTR. We'll see you next time. Off the Record with Michael Landsberg is brought to you by the Cake Steakhouse and Bar. For great steaks, good friends, see you tonight. Were you waving? Michael Landsberg's clothing, courtesy for Who's you. Like the queen there? The queen mum. Oh, Mad Dog Fest Show. What a thrill it was to meet you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you, Michael.